Alright guys, welcome to the final part of the ultimate guide to Bloodborne. And we should probably... Oh, well, vanilla Bloodborne. Yeah, and we should probably say immediately... Consume all three of your umbilical cords if you want to fight the moon presence. If you haven't already. Yeah. If you don't have all three umbilical cords by now, then there's a good chance that you might... You should have at least two. Um, so, you get one from Wet Nurse, guaranteed. You get one from the Old Abandoned Workshop, which is at the bottom of the Healing Church Workshop, guaranteed. And you'll get one from the prostitute, or you can get the one from Yosefka's quest lane if you kill her when she is not a hunter, which is like after you beat Rom. Yeah, so if you beat Rom and then you go to Yosefka's mm -hmm. clinic, then you will get an umbilical cord there. Okay, so just be careful here, by the way, because German's uh, speech isn't very long, and as by default um, in Bloodborne and Souls games, it's set to the one you don't want by default. So you want to refuse so that you fight him. If you submit your life, it just plays a pretty cool cutscene where German ends the nightmare for you, but then it doesn't make sense because then it immediately restarts again. But I'll let that figure that one out. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but, um, so... As long as you've consumed all three umbilical cords, then you will not go into NG Plus as soon as you beat German. If you have not consumed all three umbilical cords, as soon as you beat German, you immediately go into NG Plus and you wake up in Yosefka's clinic at the start of the game again. Yeah, so if you want to not go into New Game Plus, but get German's gear and then, you know, do the, like, the Chalice Dungeons or whatever in PvP yeah, in New Game... make sure you have Moon Presence as an option after German. Yeah. Because you can always just Huntsman's Mark out of the Moon Presence fight, or you can just die. Now, if you do decide to fight Moon Presence, you do not get a soul reward for German. Instead, you get a massive soul reward from Moon Presence. So the first fight, German fucked me up a little bit after it was going so well, and they just comboed me. Now, we do not like the advice, just parry it. I can't stress that enough. But if there is a legitimate method where you can parry lock German like this, then do it. Basically, he'll use these wind-up attacks. As soon as the first one is coming out, hit the parry button and you'll parry the second attack and then just go in for the visceral. You'll see it again here. Well, well, that was a different attack. There. there. See what I mean? As soon as the first attack comes out, just shoot again. Just shoot and you'll get the you'll get the visceral go in there. So if you've got the claw mark rune on, that's very handy. Or if you have blood rapture, that's also very handy for improving your survivability because you get health back when you visceral. Yeah, so I mean, honestly, this is probably the most effective quote-unquote technique for taking care of German. Yeah, like, as we said, we don't like just parry, but this is actually a method because if you keep getting him in that parry lock, until he transforms his scythe, he'll keep doing these really easy to parry attacks that have the same sort of timing. So it's, it's, it is actually a, a method to do it. Now, when he goes in this form, it's just like fighting any other NPC hunter apart from he's very dangerous. Yeah. You just gotta dodge the attacks and be careful of his combos. He is very, very quick. He has very high damage and he has a lot of really quick combos, which if you get caught in them, you're gonna take a lot of damage. And they're really tough to parry because of how quick the attacks come out. Um, but yeah, German's a very quick boss. And when you get him down to about half health, he's gonna buff. And he'll put on the effect of the old hunter's bone because he's mastered the art of quickening according to his bio. Now, don't hit him here, really, because yeah. what happens is we've done this the first time and we end up getting hit with that AOE really and hard. And he almost one shot us from full health. Yeah, so basically, as soon as he goes out of that pose, stay the fuck away yeah. from him. Now, when he has this aura up, he is significantly harder to parry. He gets the Logarius effect, where if you miss the parry, the bullets will deflect. But luckily there, on that, on that attack, like the camera's really weird on that one. You just have to go with instinct on the parry. Because it seems like he circles you completely in like this really amazingly fast dash attack. So you just gotta be careful for that. And of course I missed the parry time in there because I threw it out too late. But basically, so um, it, German kind of kind of comes down to it. when he's got his scythe, that's when you want to try and parry him. And when he doesn't have his scythe, that's when you kind of just need to try and go toe to toe with him. Yeah. Now there's an attack coming up that I have no idea how to dodge. And it's when he jumps into the air and he uses like he... F he, like he swings slash. his scythe, yeah, it's like, a, it's like a slash air wave that comes at you. I've no idea how to dodge it, guys, I couldn't tell you. But if someone knows, then let us know. I've never found an effective way to do it. I just spam dodge and hope for the best. Sort of like spamming dodge when a Brutus does a flying headbutt. Oh, now, something to mention is quick weapons are especially more effective against German simply because you can actually get hits in. Especially in his non-buff stage, by the way, the saw cleaver stuns him very well when you use bolt or fire paper, which he has equal defences to, so pick whichever yeah. one you want. Now, We're going with bolt because moon presence is next and it's weaker to bolt because it's an alien. The hunter's axe was actually, a, like, its R2s were actually okay against German, but I'd still say that really you just kind of need to get good and get good attacks in him. He has... Yeah. 
thankfully a very the proper the fitting end boss that all Souls fans have wanted because yeah. he's all he's always hard. Yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty difficult unless, of course, you've like mastered them and shit like that, or if you're particularly good at dodging and stuff. We're not saying he's going to be hard for everyone, but he's definitely a lot tougher than any of the other final bosses we've seen from the other installments of the Soulsborne games, anyway. Of yes. Um, so just so you guys know as well, when he's in the second phase, the saw cleaver won't stun him with R ones because he's buffed, so he's got like that constant high primer effect. That attack there, by the way, when he fires the single shot, will always um, put you into a visceral animation like if he hits you with it you'll always be open to a visceral and he often rolls forward trying to get you with that visceral so just look out for that as you saw we got this the um the hunter's badge from german just there yeah and now that's when the moon presence shows up so this means that we can obviously hunt our, hunter's mark out now and then it means that we can stay in new game and yeah we don't have to go in new game plus. plus so if you want to do anything else in new game then now would be the time to hunter's mark out or at least try to um, now, the badge that you got there from German allows you to buy his scythe from the store, it allows you to buy all of his armour as well. By his armour, I mean like the set that he wears when he's in the wheelchair, because the set that he wears when you fight him is different. When you fight him, he wears a top hat and the charred hunter's chest. Um, when he's in the wheelchair, he wears German's clothes. Uh, the defences aren't great, of course, because it's, it's not like his fighting attire, but it's, it's an alright looking set. Yeah, it's pretty um, good. It's, it's a nice looking set. The, the trousers on it will make you look like you're going for some sort of fucking interview. <laughs> I'm here to apply for the position of a Briatus. Um, now, when it comes to Moon Presence, Moon Presence has one really awesome mechanic that essentially yeah. it drains all of your health in one go and puts you at like one HP, but you still have like the regain possibility. Yeah. However, she is like the Moon Presence does get stunned for about four or five seconds during that AOE attack, which by the way you can dodge if you can get behind it and you get away from it far enough. The AOE has less reach behind it than it does in front of it, a lot like Pearls, but it has a huge. Re it pretty much never misses if you're in front of it at all. So if she is going to do that, then try and get in. It will look like the Moon Presence is going to sneeze. It'll be like, it'll, they'll put his hand up to its nose and then it'll like bow its head and then you'll get the explosion or your health's gone. So you can either go in there and get your health back with a HP regain or you can do probably the smarter thing and just take a few blood vials instead because you're never going to get all that health back because of how little yeah. health you actually get back unless you're using a shitload of rally runes. That's something that I've personally encountered when I was doing um, the Moon Presence is when it takes away all your health, you think, oh, well, I'll just run up to it and I'll just hit hit into it a bunch of times and then get I'll get all my health back. back yeah. But you don't. You get about half your health back and then a Moon Presence comes out of that animation incredibly quickly and then just does a combo on you because yeah. you're directly in front of it. So really it's just not worth it. It's best to just take the few blood files because mm -hmm. overall Moon Presence isn't really that difficult a boss. Really, The method is just get on her right side. Just get on her right side and you're fine. It's actually it's very reminiscent of Blood Starved Beast in terms yeah. of overall strategy. In fact, if anything, the strategy is probably easier than Blood Starved Beast because it's a little more predictable than Blood Starved Beast. Um, I find anyway, because Blood Starved Beast can do, like, do all these like crazy fast things. Now there is one thing that is really dangerous about the Moon Presence, and she has this attack that she often combos with this attack. This is the one we were talking about where it reduces all your health. So we're just going to take the vials, I'm going to close some distance as well so that I can get attacks into Moon Presence quicker. But um, that, that attack right there that reduces all your health to one, um, what can happen is that she has another attack where she'll bring these air bubbles up. This is it right here. And the bubbles will explode in midair and bits of blood will come out of them. It will rain like blood drops. If any of them touch you, you cannot use blood vials. So if she takes your health down to 1 HP, like that, and hits you with that at the same time, you're fucked, to put it simple. Yeah. You have 1 HP and you can't heal for about 60 seconds. And Moon Presence's movement is so erratic that almost definitely it's going to hit you but you can just get behind it or get on its side and then just r1 away at it it doesn't have a lot it has less health than german and it takes more damage than german as well yeah it does and a lot does, less damage yeah, than german like overall when you think about it it's aoe attack once if you were to gain your health back and you've like got that 40 percent, it's essentially just an aoe that does 60 percent damage to you but you've got the choice to take either all your health back or just take the 60 percent damage so you might as well take all your health back yeah so i mean as you can see, if you can just try and emulate what it is that we're doing, you're really not even yeah. going to have an issue with the Moon Presence. When, when she does the AoE, just back off. Um, if, there's, if the bubbles start popping up in the air to rain blood, get the hell out of there. Um, and just be careful because they, they can randomly appear. Like she can, in mid combos we've seen her like, the bubbles randomly pop up. Gary spotted it during the Let's Play when we fought Moon Presence. A bubble appeared that me and Tony didn't even see. 
so you just gotta be wary of like the bubbles and stuff like that because that is the that is the dangerous part is the bubble then the one hp combo can't stress it enough it will end the fight immediately if you do get hit with it you're almost better immediately just hunters marking out and resetting so I get hit with it there, and now you're gonna see that I can't use my blood vials. I'm mashing triangle, and as you can see, I've got the Dark Souls 1, my S, this is empty, or I can't use this in this world sort of animation. Yeah. So that's what the that's what the blood does as I get hit with it at the end. But that's pretty much it for Bloodborne in, in general. Yeah, I mean we're we're gonna cover the DLC of course. But what we have now is that this is the ending cutscene where you turn into a little slug thing, and it doesn't make that much sense. And I've seen what Vati said about it. And it still doesn't make that much sense. <laughs> just the um, game in general just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, why am I a fucking slug? Like, what? I, I, don't, I don't get how you're a ba you're meant to be a baby great one. By what definition? I killed Moon Presence, now I'm a slug, now I'm better. What? Yeah, I know. But now what's going to happen is you're going to wake up in Yosefka's clinic at the very beginning once we, of course, skip the credits. Um, you can thank Miyazaki for this game, I guess. Yeah. Or not, if you hate Frenzy as much as we do. In this worst case, fuck Miyazaki. Yeah, it's, it's, like, that's on par with fuck Konami. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, you, you do all this good and then you take it all away with Frenzy. You, know, you just give, 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 and then you just rip it away. Build me up Buttercup just to <laughs> let me down <laughs> and mess me around. Now, so, when it comes to the Chalice Dungeon Guide, we will show you where we get the last few items which mm -hmm. are left. There's only a few, which is a few there's runes. One more weapon. There's like there's there's one weapon that is unique to only the chalice dungeons, um, but pretty much if you do the entire game and you get all the items like we did, and you then do all the chalice dungeons, you're going to platinum the game. It is quite it is that simple. Like there's not a whole lot of collect every rare item or any of that shit because there's not any rare items. Yeah. It's it's really easy to platinum Bloodborne and beating the chalice dungeons is the one way to do it. I accidentally hit the share button here when I was trying to swap gestures. I've no fucking idea why. So, uh, this is us just counting all the gestures to see if we got them. We yeah. got all but two on camera. Uh, the two that we missed was one from Jura. Which, because his quest line didn't work in our actual footage, but it worked in the test footage. Which we've shown you, and mm -hmm. the other um, gesture was from giving one blood, blood. Drag, one blood drag to the Vital Opinion. Yeah, which we can't do, of course, because we've done this guide offline, so we can't go online to get the single blood drag. Um, to get the, the gesture, but that's how you do it. If you don't believe us, look at the wiki. And basically that's because it. we got all the gestures, that therefore means that we've done all the NPC quests as well, technically. Yeah, because we've got the gestures badge. are the unique things that you get. So. Yeah, badges and gestures are what you get for doing all the NPC quest lines and stuff like that, so we, we're, we're pretty sure we covered everything. Um, we're sure we get every item as well. Um, so you guys should be masters of Bloodborne by now. And if you aren't, then just go back and watch it all again. Yeah. Um, that that's that's more than acceptable. So now that you're an NG plus for those of you that don't know, you're gonna do less damage and you're gonna take way more damage because that's how NG plus works. You just start the game again, but you have all your gear from the last game cycle, and this one's tougher. And just like Dark Souls, the difficulty peaks out at the seventh cycle. Um, so once you enter NG plus seven, that's you beating Bloodborne at its highest difficulty basically yeah. so please feel free to use our guide through all the ng pluses if you feel like grabbing every item um, but uh, we we don't advise that because fuck grabbing every item in ng pluses in bloodborne yeah that's just too much shit but man. you know we want to thank you for anyone that's watched all the watched all the episodes or if we've helped you then that's absolutely fantastic yeah well done guys you just beat the probably one of the best games available on ps4 right now yeah probably one um, of the best games this gen so far anyway yeah, so far. I'm really happy with the way Bloodborne came out, and I'm really happy with the way the guide came out. We, um, we managed to figure this game out pretty quickly, as you can see. Yeah. And hopefully we got we got to you guys before you all beat it without us. Yeah, Otherwise, hopefully. what's the point? But, I mean, you know, we did, did take a little <laughs> bit of a while to get it out, but it got there on the end, and there's still many years worth of people playing it and watching it. And there's it, so. the, the DLC to come as well, so oh, we're yeah. going to have to learn that pretty damn quickly. But, yeah, guys, that's it. Well done. Well done. Right. You've beaten it. So yeah, and I guess now what we'll, do we do? Now know, we don't matter. Like now they can. Now, now we just don't need to exist. Yeah, I mean they could just turn the video off now or I before mean, now. I mean. Yeah, they probably turned it off after we beat them in presence. Let's be fair. Yeah, pretty much. So I mean, if anybody's watching right now, um, this is us going to admit that we're both Nazis. I mean, I wouldn't use the word Nazi. I'd probably use something closer to like fascist sympathizer. Mm, 
something more along the lines of like socialist but in a very patriotic sense <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Which is yes, a Nazi, I know, yeah. but but <laughs> <laughs> not a Nazi at the same time. Listen, if if you're still listening to this point, kudos. Yeah, because now we're just rambling shit because we don't know how to close out the final part of the fucking guide. <laughs> so awkward. I don't know how to say goodbye. It's just I hate long goodbyes. Don't leave us, guys. We love. We can change. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys, we'll see you in the next one. See ya. Oh fuck.